2 Corinthians 3, I love continuing education. Because I want you guys to have your road paved with a little bit of more stuff than potholes. I just say, let no man deceive. What? Oh, that's the wrong Corinthians. Yeah, I'll not stay there too long. But we all with an open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord. What is the glory of the Lord? It's his halo. It's a blinding light that makes you go prostrate in you. What is his glory? It's who he is. It's how he thinks. How he thinks, how he speaks, how he acts. And I thought somewhere, boy, hold that thought right there. I got another thought coming. I just lost it. It'll come back, won't it? The glory of the Lord are changed. Let me ask you a question. You're thinking, people. Would you think that that means there's something in a person that needed to change? Do you think that would be logical conclusion? So if you're going to change, you're going to change into some fabricated personality of somebody else. Somebody else's image. You're going to have a, you're going to have a role model. Most of the role models in America and all the big superstars are dead from drug overdose. I, for the life of me, I cannot believe how people can be so successful and then blow it and die so quickly over such a stupid way of life. Honestly, in all due respect to them, duh. But some Christians do the same thing. We stumble through life having a pothole experience because we don't want to change. Could I put some asphalt on your road? I don't mean to offend you, but this is coming to me. For a lot of people in this argument, it's either my fault, it's your fault, or it's asphalt. That's all I hear. Everybody's got to have a scapegoat. Come on now, you've been around a while. This is, it's okay to be honest, isn't it? Some people say, well, it's my fault. No, it's your fault. No, it's just asphalt. So everybody's got a donkey they want to pin the tail on. This isn't pin. <laughs> I'm sure glad I'm with family tonight. If you're a visitor, welcome. This isn't pinning the tail on a donkey and blindfolded. This is who you're, oh, it came back to me. Having the mind of Christ, put on the mind of Christ. Hold that one. I want to come back to it, but find the other one. Where's it at? We're having a Bible study. No, we're not. We're having continuing education. People fall asleep in Bible studies. Heard that already three years ago. Where's put on the mind of Christ? Come on, help me out. Where's it you'd have the mind of Christ? I know it's there somewhere. I don't know where it is. You find it. You, where's it at? Oh, there it is. It's on a screen. Why didn't you tell me that? Oh, thank you. For who hath known? Now, one of the things, before I read this, one of the things we discussed with you a couple of weeks ago, because I wanted to help you overcome the obstacle of not knowing Scripture like you need to. People just get choke. And you think you have to memorize scripture to know it. One of the things you, you see happening, and I, I'm not the example, but I am a student, and I have spent a little time learning. Otherwise, I couldn't teach very much, could I? But if you remember, as I'm, as I'm beginning to teach you tonight, and things, and I really believe the Holy Spirit wants to say things here. And he uses people like you and I, doesn't he? But with truth as the foundation. As you watch me move through this, what is coming to me by inspiration? 
key words. So you should know where it is. Jesus didn't defeat Satan by saying, well, in Deuteronomy chapter, or in Psalms chapter, uh, uh, Satan is, is right here. He, you know how Jesus defeated the devil in, in, in where was that, Matthew 4? Yeah. You know what he said? He didn't say, oh, let me find it in the Word somewhere here. He said, uh, well, sir, Mr. Satan type guy, thanks for giving me instruction in the Word, but for it is written. The devil didn't say, where's line and verse? I said, the devil didn't say, Where line, where's line and verse? Because you don't know line and verse, you choke. And somebody says to you, well, where's that? You know what I tell them? Go find it yourself. You need, you need the experience. But because you can't find it, you don't know it, you choke and you shrivel and we find you behind some plant and it's a veggie tail. Don't choke because you don't know where it is. Put the pressure back on the other person and say, you know, it's time for you to learn the Bible. Let me help you. Get a good King James Version and a Strong's Concordance and you can learn how to find these things. Why, am, why, was, why, why are you asking me to be your seer? It works. I've tried it. They don't like you. You know why? Because they're lazy. They're fast food junkies. Yeah, people are fast food word junkies. They pop scriptures just like pills. And goes out Charmin Land later. Because it didn't produce the life it was intended to do. For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? You know, one of the one of the interesting characters in the Bible that really <laughs> amused me was was Job. Poor Job. You know, Job decided that he would become God's instructor. He did. He began to, he began to try to teach God what God needed to know. And this is so cool if you go back and read Job, because at some point, the Lord appeared to him and said, Okay, Mr. Big Boy, where were you when I went, did this, 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 and this, 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 and this? Where were you when I did this? And Job said, Whoop! Shut my mouth. Do you want to become God's instructor or would you like God to instruct you? When you say, yeah, but, you become God's instructor. When you change God's word, you become God's instructor. I'm just trying to understand what's already said. I don't have the energy to change it and figure it out. You know how much energy it is to have to change God's word and then teach others error? That's a lot of cotton-picking work. And then you can't prove the error. So you've got a bunch of parrots that are parroting you because they're too lazy to look up the scriptures themselves. And so you become an oracle to them in ignorance, in error, and they think you're smart. Educated dummy, here we come. I want to know how God thinks. If you don't know how God thinks, you ain't going to make it. You may make it, but it's going to be a rough road for you. Because you don't have the tools. You don't have the thoughts to help you overcome the other thoughts that are wearing you down. If I didn't know God's Word, I wouldn't make it. I wouldn't have any sword to flash. I, wouldn't, I couldn't say, for it is written. I, my mind would just be filled with everything but the mind of Christ. Now, what does it say that we have the mind of Christ? It means you don't know nothing. He knows everything. So quit arguing. Just get with the package and read your Bible and learn by, and let the Spirit of God teach you how God thinks. That's how Jesus learned, the man. You know, when he was debating at age 12 with the religious leaders of his day in Jerusalem, he was able to debate with them because he had been reading the Torah, the writings, and the prophets. I said he had been reading from a childhood the writings of the Torah, 
the writings and the prophets, and he understood. If you start reading your Bible, I got some good news for you. You're going to understand. Because the Spirit of God has something to work with to illuminate you. Otherwise, what's the purpose? Sometimes in administering the kingdom of God, it has Pastoring a church is interesting. Have fun. Try it someday. But sometimes in bringing information for the benefit of the flock, I get arguments. I don't believe it means that. And what do you think it means? Since the scriptures are not a private interpretation, what do you think it means? Well, I don't know what it doesn't mean. That. No, then tell me what it means. Well, it's not that. Then tell me what it means. They don't have an answer. They just have, but doesn't mean. It's, it's like, a dog chasing his tail. It's a dizzy conversation. For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Now go back to the other scripture that I left or I zipped over there. Did you remember what it was? I don't remember what it was, but it was something. There we are. Thanks for keeping up with me. It's good to have a scribe once in a while, isn't it? But we all, say we all, all of y'all, with an open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord, which means it's a work of the Holy Spirit to help you change into His image. But you can't change. Listen, ladies. How many of you went down to the beauty shop and looked at all those books full of pictures of, hair, of hairdos and tried to pick out the one you liked. How about the beautician? Did she give you a book to look at too? How many of you looked at catalogs for dresses and clothing and, and you went online just to try to figure it and you dressed up it in your mind? You're trying to pattern after something. Find seek ye first the kingdom of God again. That's interesting. But, but see, he first, the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. How, how many? How many? How many? Deuteronomy chapter 28. Verse 1 and 2. And it shall come to pass. Is that prophetic? Everybody's looking for a prophetic word. You're getting one tonight. Right from your Bible. I think it's best you get a prophetic word from the Bible rather than a wandering seer. Although God does use individuals to speak for him. Don't get me wrong. I would not have the ability to say otherwise. But many people are looking for seers and not for God's word. They're looking for a human that can divine for them. And it should come to pass. Is that prophetic? What's the next word? Well, that was quiet. I lost them, Pastor John. They're sleeping already. What's the next word? Is the word, the word if is like a fulcrum. Do you know what a fulcrum is? How many of you, when your kids run on a teeter-totter? How many were on a teeter-totter and your friend jumped off and let you? It's not nice. It's the point of tilt. And there's going to pass if you will hearken when you feel like it. On Friday nights for an hour. Sundays for an hour. Hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord your God. What do you think scriptures are? I want to ask you a question. What do you think the scriptures in your Bible really are? So what is the word of God? The voice of the Lord your God. I said, it is the voice of the Lord your God. That's what they had in the Torah. The commandments were the voice, was the mind of God expressed to the people. Paul, New Testament. 
New Testament. Paul said, through the law, to Torah. Paul said, New Testament, through the law, came the knowledge of sin. It told us what was right and what was wrong. Do you think it's important, believers, to know what is of God and what is not of God in your lives? Do you think it's really important to know the difference? Good. So the scriptures you have in your Bible is the voice of the Lord your God for you and for me and for us. Find this. I want to come back to this. Find all scriptures profitable. We did that last Sunday. Find it. All scriptures profitable. Not some. Find it. I want to read it. All scriptures profitable. Where's it at? Help me out. Help me out. There it is. Second Timothy. Remember I told you how to remember it? You didn't remember. You did not. I was waiting to see who would say John 3.16. It never happened. I was baiting you for the career. I was prompting you because last time we came together, I said next to John 3.16, 2 Timothy 3.16 is the next scripture you need to know. Did I say that? You remembered eventually. I didn't hear it. You need to holler up. I know you can holler when you feel like it. You're welcome. Don't tell me you ladies can't holler when you, when you feel like it. We can hear you all the way to. Come on in. Welcome. That you can make it. Andre, give this lady a hug. She needs a hug right now. I can tell it. Get up and go give my sister a hug. Tell her she's loved in Jesus. And tell her you love her too. Give her a hug. No, he didn't do that with me. <laughs> You're welcome. See there? How did you come to church late? You get a hug. It works around here. All scr all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. Come on in. Is she with you? Come, she's right over here. Now, Audrey, you know what you have to do. Passing out hugs. Say, I love you. There you go. Thank you for coming. Yeah. Oh, man. I was patting the whole back over there. That's getting cozy. Are you okay with that? Yeah, I tell you what, it's good stuff. Who else wants a hug around here? Give them, give somebody a hug. Come on, get up, go give somebody a hug. I don't feel, I'm all these, I mean, I, you talk about I did that and I had, it looked like a hound dog, a basset hound dog walked into this place. A basset hound dog, why, well, I didn't get a hug. Give somebody a hug. Can't be hugless. Oh, I had a phrase from last week. I give it again. Hey, find your seats, please. I have to change your name. The Wandering Saints. We had it. We coined a phrase a couple services ago. I just look at my notes here. And we did part of it. There are two words we, we wanted to add to your vocabulary. And it, are you buggable? And are you huggable? Are you buggable without being irritated? Sometimes. Are you huggable without being irritated? Well, it depends. Some people don't want to be hugged. Have you ever hugged somebody who's like hugging a telephone pole? Oh, that's so horrible. Man, I'm never going to get through this. Who cares? All Scripture 
is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. Doctrine is not a bad word. You got a driver's license in Georgia if you're from Georgia because you understood the doctrine of the road. You took a, you took a written test, didn't you? If you flunked the written test, you didn't get to take the road test, did you? A lot of Christians are driving, but they flunked the written test. That's why we have so many wrecks in Christianity. Doctrine is how God thinks. That's all it is. You not be afraid of doctrine. Because if you didn't want doctrine, all you have is density. Duh. The Bible says there's a way that seems right. Duh. Unto a man, but the end thereof is death and destruction. So you, you need a little, you need a little information, don't you?